Hello, I'm Joey Lawrence with Jock Sports on our first edition of Top Jocks Interviews. We are fortunate to have not one, but two Arizona raised men who have devoted decades of their lives to the game of golf in many different ways. Their names are synonymous with Arizona golf. We welcome Paul and Tom Pertzer. All right, well, let's get started with the older brother, Paul. Uh, how did this love, love affair get started with golf? Uh, well, um, our dad was a golfer, Joey, okay. and he, um, he got a start playing. He started me first because I was the oldest, and uh, we played, both played a lot of sports, baseball, basketball, football, um, you know, growing up, and, and he was always trying to get us to do that, and basically, uh, that's how we got started. Okay, awesome. Tom, do you have anything to add to that? No, it's basically the same for me. I, you know, I, I was a younger brother, and you know how younger brothers are. They want to do whatever their older brother, you know, d does. And Absolutely. You know, and when we played baseball, he always let me play with all his buddies, so I got good in a hurry. I had to get good in a hurry or I wouldn't be able to play. So I played baseball, loved playing baseball, but then we started playing golf. And, and like, you, like he said, Dad was really instrumental in, <clears throat> in us uh, starting to play. I mean, he, he just, he loved the game, and uh, um, he's the one that got us started. Well, there's obviously, like you said, always competition between brothers. So when was the first time you beat your older brother? I don't know. It didn't happen very, it didn't happen <laughs> very often. And um, uh, I, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you. Um, I remember one thing that when, when I went to Arizona State and he was uh, in high school and I used to hit the ball like way past him. And then uh, I came home, and it was probably my freshman year at ASU. And I came home after that year, and I came and played with Tom, and, and I hit the ball down there and hit it really good. And you know, he, he he's playing with us, and he hits it down there, and he's like right next to me. And I go, hmm, that's weird. And I said, it must be something wrong with my golf ball. Here. <laughs> so next hole, kind of the same thing. You know, he knocks it down there, and. We're right together again. I go, I changed switch balls. It took me about <laughs> five holes to figure out, hey, he's hit it as far as I was in, you know, so, and then he's always hit it a little bit farther than me past since then. But that was kind of a funny time of where I'm kind of thinking, man, there's something wrong with my equipment here, mm -hmm. instead of he's just getting a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you mentioned, ASU, you had your All-American career. Did that have any influence on you going to ASU? Sure. I mean, I, well, I mean, I always, I kind of wanted to go to ASU anyway, but when he went, um, I, I just thought it'd be fun to, uh, you know, kind of follow him, and um, I think his last year was my first year, I think, and uh, so yeah, it was it was fun, you know, it was just it's it was just fun to have an older brother that, you know, you could look up to, and he was really good, you know, when he was a junior and all through college and stuff, so it it made me, you know, try to perform better, you know, it gave me something to shoot at. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, very instrumental in me going to ASU. And Paul, you won two Arizona <laughs> Opens, a Colorado Open, and set several local course records. And in 1978, after six years on the PGA Tour, you had a wrist injury that ended your PGA career. You obviously rebounded very well, though. How did you cope with that? Um, that was a tough thing. Uh, because I kind of felt like um, Tom had just almost won the U.S. Open. He won the L.A. Open in 1977, and I was um, I was just starting to really play golf uh, extremely well. And I, in fact, I had the best year I ever had. It, it, I was off the tour that year, but I won a number of tournaments, uh, including the Arizona Open and the Colorado Open. And, uh, a couple other tournaments, and I won our section PGA Championship. And uh, so I finally felt like, wow, I can play about as good as anybody can play golf. And, and Tom, with, you know, with him winning the LA Open, I was so excited for him. And uh, he, uh, it, it was just a, you know, it was a really, I was really hopeful and, uh, you know, of, of having a great career. And, and, and it was over. I couldn't play really for about almost five years. It, my wrist bothered me. So, but you know what, it's a, uh, Hey, um, it, it's okay. You know, uh, the Lord's gotten me through that, and He's helped me kind of work through that thing. Well, great. Things do happen for a reason, yeah. obviously. But yeah. um, I've been told that Zig Ziglar had a big influence on the two of you. Can you tell us how, either of you? 
Well, I'll start. Uh, basically, that was Zig Kellner helped me kind of fi figure out that you know what my abilities were. A lot of people would tell me that I was a really good player, and, and I knew Tom was obviously because you can't win a PGA Tour event and not be a great player. You have to be a great player to win a PGA Tour event. And uh, with Tom Lynn in there, um, and, and, you know, and uh, we both attended Zig's one of Zig's uh, week long seminars down there. And uh, that really kind of changed my view of, of myself and my abilities and what I could do. And I didn't have to worry about, you know, whether Jack Nicklaus was playing this tournament or Billy Casper was playing this tournament or, you know, uh, Fred Couples or whoever it was. It didn't make any difference. I could do what I could do. And I know Tom probably feels the same way, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, Zeke just really, it was. Wow, I mean, I would say everybody's cheating themselves. They didn't read his book, See You at the Top. Well, and I think he was, because when we started, I remember uh, this friend of mine, Eddie Grant, had a, a little uh, thing called subconscious golf. And it was really the first time that I had ever even thought about, you know, this, the mental part of the game. I mean, you, you, you know, some guys you'd hear something, some player talk about it a little bit, but Zig, kind of, you know, he wasn't just specific golf, but I mean, it certainly helped you perform better. You know, he, it, his stuff helps anybody perform better in, in, in whatever they're doing. But, so we can, we kind of, Paul met him first, and so, and I kind of, you know, kind of snuck in with Paul, but, um, uh, but he helped us, you know, kind of, and he was a golfer, Zig was a golfer, so he, he kind of helped us related to golf and stuff so it was it was a big it was a big deal for both of us yeah and, and I would say Eddie, Eddie Grant's tapes were really good yeah they were they were very good he did a terrific job on those tapes and then Ed and Ed's tapes and then you know knowing Zig and really um, you know listen to I mean one one of Zig's tapes is over an hour long I'd probably listen to that thing 300 times in a, in a year and I told Zig, I called Zig up and I said, hey, I said, I can give that, if you ever get sick, I'll do this, I'll do the speech for you, you know. I mean, it was, seriously, it was incredible. Well, obviously it had a big impact on both of you. Tom, you won several tournaments on the PGA Tour and now the Champions Tour, including the 1984 Phoenix Open. Uh, what victories are the most special to you? Well, for, you know, LA being the first, that was always, uh, that was a big one. But. You know, winning at home in your backyard, uh, you know, where, you know, I had people come out that I hadn't seen in, you know, four or five, six, ten years. You know, they came out and fall and watched the last round and stuff. And um, so that was exciting. But just, I, I think just the fact of it being the Phoenix Open, you know, where I live, that was probably the biggest. Um, uh, certainly the, the uh, World Series tournament was huge because give me a 10-year exemption and I had gotten I got hurt the, the year after I won that so I needed that, uh, that 10 years to, to keep playing so it worked out great. Well, great and you had a top a few top five finishes in the majors but I have to ask what was it like playing in the Masters? Um, you know my turn my favorite uh, tournament has always been the US Open I, you know I figure it's the national championship of, of my country, but um, so I always look forward to playing in, in the U.S. Open. Um, I had two good chances of winning, 77-79, um, didn't get it done, but I, I was close. Uh, Masters, I, for me, my first four or five years that I played, I didn't like it at all, because <laughs> I thought it was a punting contest. Only, only later, that I figure out, whoa, it's not really a putting contest, it's a second shot contest. Because you have to, the greens, you know, it's hard hard to see on TV, but the greens are so severe that, you know, you can, you'd rather be 20 feet here putting at this hole than five feet on this side of the cup putting back at the hole. You know, this five footer, you're totally, def you know, it was all defense, where this 20 footer, you had a chance of making it. So after that, after, the first four or five years I played, I kind of figured out that, wait, it's it's all about hitting your iron shots, where to place your iron shots. And 
certain spot so you could make putt, you know, try to make putts for birdies. Did you have a mentor on the PGA Tour by chance? Um, I don't know whether I ever had somebody older. I always, you know, my buddies, the guys that I played a lot with, Jay Haas and Freddie Couples, um, I, I don't know whether I, whether I had an, you know, an older mentor. Um, I was always too like shy to go up to a Jack Nicholas or Arnold and ask them, you know, what to do here or there. I, I was I was maybe a little bit too shy, you know, to to do kind of that stuff. So I I really didn't I didn't really have a, a mentor. Oh, well, Paul, after the PGA Tour, you worked for several golf courses, and with the Grand Canyon University's golf co coach, you started the Pertzer Golf Academy in 1995. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Pertzer Golf is all about. We do all kinds of things. Our, our, our main thing I do is is I um, teach golf, and we do instruction programs all the way from junior golf camps to uh, you know corporate events where you know it would be a small group of men, and we do you know playing lessons with them. And Tom Tom does some of that stuff with me too. Or when we do our bigger events, uh, corporate events and stuff like that. So as far as on the horizon, um, I would like to do, uh, in addition to helping people play better golf, uh, I'd like to do some things with Tom um, corporate-wise. Cor we, we can run events all the way from small board meetings for companies to uh, running a Champions Tour or PGA Tour event. So that's kind of what I'd like to, I hope, I hope Tom and I get the chance to do that, um, you know, in the future. So that's the, that, those, are, those are some of the things that I'd like to do. Awesome. Uh, with your busy schedule on the Champions Tour, do you get to have a lot of time to help your brother with Kurtz or Golf? Yeah, we only have 26 events on the Champions Tour now. So I've got quite a bit of time, and, but most of the time when I help Paul is, you know, if he has a big outing, or, or he needs me to come over and teach. It'll be kind of end of the year, November, December. Um, so, but he does most of the teaching. He, I, he's, he's really good at it. Um, he gets the most out of players. You know, he gets the most out. Of, and he doesn't, whether you're a really good player or whether you're just beginning, he's, he's really good at whatever it is, whatever the situation is. So, and that's been fun. We've, we've gotten to do a couple of those of those outings, so it's always fun. And Paul, you're obviously a very high energy guy with no signs of slowing down. Uh, what's next on the horizon for you? Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we, you know, we, we, um, I'm hoping, you know, as Tom's career is winding down, and he's got, a, he's got five more good years at least in him, but, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do some more stuff together, spend some more time together. Um, you know, I'm busy doing the golf academy, and Tom's busy playing the tour, and uh, so I hope, hope we'll, hopefully we'll get to spend a little more time together. Maybe so. And Tom, you are still competing at a very high level. Um, what does your tournament schedule look like for the rest of 2014? Well, it's, it, the, the beginning of this year, we've had a couple tournaments, and we've had three, two or three weeks off. So it's it's kind of stop and go right now, but. Um, the last, starting this next couple of weeks, we're, we're almost every week until the uh, end of October. So we're just kind of get. I'm just kind of getting going. Um, you know, looking forward to it. I, I, I haven't had a great start, but um, I you know the stuff that I need to get better at. So uh, just keep plugging away. I'm looking forward to this year. Very good. And we really do appreciate the time that you spent with us today, and I hope our viewers learned a little bit more about the Pertzer Brothers while doing so. Uh, but from the home of the Pertzer Golf Academy, Stone Creek Golf Club, I'm Joey Lawrence, and I hope to see you next month for a new Top Jocks interview guest. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Thanks, Joey.